It's a glorious day. What's up? And welcome back to another unboxing review with Gizmo Slip Tech. Today, we've got the XMG Neo 17. I've got it in this box down here. I'm going to show it to you. It's super exciting because this is a water cooled laptop, the only water cooled laptop that we've had in many, many years. Um, there was an old water-cooled laptop from Asus, uh, but it wasn't very good implementation. The portability really wasn't there, and um, yeah, it didn't really take off at all. And I'm hoping this one, the implementation is going to be better. Um, you'll have better functionality both on the water cooler, off the water cooler, and it'll be convenient enough for everyone to find it more useful. And hopefully the performance gains from the water cooler will also be awesome and massive. Now, I have seen... Um, other people with this laptop get over 24,000 in time spy before, but I haven't, I don't know what they did to do that. They may have, you know, edited drivers or anything like that. So I'm not going to be doing to that level of extreme overclocking today. I'm just going to use whatever XMG does on their back end, right? However, they send it to me, um, with basic updates, driver updates, all that. And we're going to see how much we can overclock it using MSI Afterburner and see if we can break 24,000 or not. I'm hoping we'll at least get 23,000 as a baseline. Um, hopefully 23 and a half. I don't know, maybe 24 though. I'm hoping 24. That's my true hope. If we could bust 24, that'd be amazing. I don't know if we'll be able to do that in time spy GPU score. I don't know. Now the water cooler focuses mainly on the GPU performance. There is some benefit to the CPU, but don't expect uh, as high a CPU performance on this machine as you do on some of the other laptops that have more of a focus on cooling the CPU better. So this is my laptop list. And this list right here has every single laptop with an RTX 4000 series, as well as a bunch of RTX 2000 series uh, being available that are worth potentially buying because they have a really great sale, okay? So um, look in here, the biggest thing about the XMG Neo, with people who are interested in XMG Neo, right? They want high-end GPU performance. So that's the primary thing that I have selected for the comparisons here, okay? So uh, this laptop list, you can sort it by price, you can sort it by laptop rating, you can sort it by thermal design, you can sort it by display quality. Um, there's so many different ways you can sort and use this list. If I type in Neo, you can see here's the two XMG Neo laptops. You got the 16 inch and you got the 17 inch and they're almost identical. They're almost identical. They're not quite identical. They're 16 inches, obviously, and 17 inches. So the 17 inch is a little bigger and the 17 inch does have a little bit more thermal headroom as rated by XMG themselves. I did get hands on with this when I was at CES uh, and I did get to try the mechanical keyboard while I was at CES and that is such a better keyboard than the membrane keyboard that they sent on this guy. Um, I just want to point that out right at the beginning here. I do definitely recommend getting the mechanical keyboard if you buy this laptop. Um, so this is the laptop that we're going to be looking at today, the XMG Neo 17. Uh, the 16 is virtually identical. I believe the same ports, same options for the most part. Um, but the primary difference is uh, being a 16 is chassis, there's just not as much thermal capacity because of the, you know, the heat fins and the heat pipes are not as big. And I'm not sure exactly how it's designed. It's precisely differently, but I just know the thermal headroom was like five watts lower or something according to XMG Neo's, uh, sorry, Tom's sheet that he sent out. There was a slight difference in CPU performance, but the GPU performance on the Neo 16 and 17 were very similar to one another. So uh, what are the competition? Well, if you do want to buy the XMG Neo, let's go ahead and go show you the configure page. So if you wanted to buy this, you click on this configure button, you're gonna be paying um, I believe this is euros. I'm not an expert on all these foreign currencies. Anyway, uh, so you've got 4090 with membrane keyboard. Don't get the membrane keyboard though. If you're gonna buy this laptop, don't buy the membrane keyboard. Get the Cherry MX, all right? Wait, it's worth waiting for the Cherry MX, guaranteed, all right? Uh, so the base price is 2250. Um, you do get a 2560 by 1600 resolution display, G-Sync, 99% sRGB, so not a very colorful display. Uh, compared to the competition, which goes up to 100% P3 color gamut, which is much, uh, much more colorful, right? 100% sRGB is in the ballpark of like 80-ish P3 color gamut, a little higher than 80. I don't know. We'll see. We're gonna be we're gonna be testing the display today of this XMG Neo with my Spider 5 Elite. 
Um, we've got the i9-13900HX in all of these XMG Neos. You cannot get it with a cheaper CPU or the higher end CPUs, so that's a downside. Because um, basically, this thing theoretically could be quite a bit cheaper if you could. Uh, you get two sticks of 8 gig SK Hynix as the default RAM option, but you can switch this out for some other brands if you want to save some money or spend more money. And I'm not sure, right now, they do not have the 6400 uh, DDR5 RAM available. It's not available yet, okay? Um, you will, basically, there was a limited number of these, they sold out right away, and now you've gotta wait for it if you wanna get this, or maybe you can buy this after the fact and put them in later, because it does support it, obviously, right? If you can figure out which exactly 64 DDR5, 6400 sticks you need to buy, uh, you should be able to upgrade that at a later time when those sticks become more available. You got RAM upgrades, you got SSD upgrades, uh, you got a second SSD that you can put in here. You've got, uh, you can pick between different types of keyboard on XMG's website, which is pretty cool. Intel Wi-Fi 6E AX211. And you obviously uh, will want to have Windows, probably Windows 11 Home or Pro, one of the two. But uh, standard 24 month warranty. Gotta love that, all right? Quick repairs within the first six months, it says. So if you have a breakdown right away, you get a quicker repair, wow. Uh, you get quick, rep you can upgrade the quick repair to be last longer for only 40, 50 bucks, or you can extend it to 36 uh, months, so three years, for 149. Now, I don't think this covers accidental, so just keep that in mind. No accidental coverage, like we did uh, have accidental coverage on the SCAR 16. Um, so that was nice. Now let's see here, uh, if we wanted to try to upgrade this to the 4090 version, where is that right here? So the 4070 version goes up to 2620, 4080 goes up to 3336, and 4090 is 3975. If we were to change this uh, to USD, I'm just curious, what is the value? $4,220 to get the fully tricked out version of this. Um, and again, you're gonna wanna get the Cherry MX keyboard too. I'm not sure where that is. Silent membrane right here. So it's $125 to get the, the mechanical keyboard, but I feel like it's worth it, all right? That is probably super worth it. That's a pretty expensive upgrade, but that would still be worth it to me. Okay, so what are the, what are the competition? against this laptop. Um, I'm really excited about this, uh, primarily because of the overclocked liquid water-cooled GPU. And I'm gonna try setting that up today. It's gonna be very challenging for me because I, I, uh, I we'll have to see how challenging it is, I guess. I'm just, just I'm a little intimidated of <laughs> making myself into an idiot on live stream, uh, messing it up somehow. But I'm, I'm probably worried about nothing. Um, I glanced through the quick setup guide or whatever for the XMG Oasis, and it's not exactly the simplest thing and not exactly the most complex process either. But um, okay, Zephyrus Duo 16, I did a live unboxing of this recently, and it is a very awesome laptop. We've got a Ryzen 9 7945 HX. With, uh, you can get this with a 4080 or a 4090. Price is about $500 difference between the 4080 and 4090 version. Um, all metal design, that's the big thing to hear that differentiates the Duo 16. Uh, with some of the competition, as well as the dual display and the, the more forward-facing uh, placement on the keyboard as well. Helios 18, this sucker is another competitor to the XMG Neo 17. It's got a monster QHD 250 hertz, 1000 nits LED, mini LED display, and it's not exactly the most portable thing out there and not the most powerful thing out there, but it's got probably the best display in an 18 inch laptop. We got the Razer Blade 18. Uh, this is my laptop of choice so far in 2023. I'm really enjoying this laptop and it's, uh, it's performs well, it has good balance of speaker and audio acoustics. And uh, it's got a really good display, great webcam, Windows Hello, uh, the keyboard feels good, the touchpad feels good, uh, good port selection on here, price is pretty expensive, feels very premium though, I, I've been enjoying my Blade 18 a lot. Uh, the GT77, I've done several videos on the GT77, this sucker is 
primarily one of the number one competitors to the XMG Neo because the people that are looking at the XMG Neo are looking for the most GPU performance out there. And this is the most powerful GPU I have tested so far this year. And I'm hoping that on the liquid cooler today, the XMG Neo 17 might be able to surpass the GT77. Now, I don't expect that when you're on air, you're going to be able to surpass the GT77. The GT77 is on air. So... Yeah, I mean it's it's pretty it's it's pretty awesome. You got a 4K 144 hertz mini LED display on the GT77, uh, RTX 4090 watt, also factory overclocked, uh, higher than the standard competition for the RTX 4090s. i9 13980HX that is fully undervoltable. Uh, Legion Pro 7i and the Legion Pro 7 that has the Ryzen chip. Uh, these are also highly competitive with the XMG Neo 17. These ones are going to have you know no liquid air or no liquid option, obviously, on this. The display is about the same level of quality, though a little bit brighter on the Legion Pro 7i, but it's the same color gamut, 100% sRGB. Uh, similar RAM speed, DDR5, 5600. Um, Overall, I think the Lenovo Legion also is going to come factory overclocked, though based that I'm saying that based on the information I have from the benchmarks I've seen from other users. So uh, definitely got some nice things about the Legion Pro 7 and Pro 7i. But the thing is, uh, they did have some noticeable backwards steps in terms of design and quality this year. The RGB lighting is worse. The touchpad is now plastic, which is super weird on a $3,000 plus dollar, uh, laptop. Like, how is that possible? It's the only one that I know of over $3,000 that's on a glass touchpad. That's absurd in my opinion. Uh, and I believe still no windows. Hello. I don't think so. That's, that's another issue. Um, and on the XMG Neo, we do have Windows Hello. I, I have been using that. Anyway, so those are some of the primary competitors. There's definitely some other ones like the SCAR 16, SCAR 18 uh, that you can consider as well. And uh, you got the GE 78HX. Those are some other honorable mentions to consider. But let's go ahead and switch gears now and get to the unboxing. All right, so this is the box that everything was shipped in, okay? So you got the cooler in here, you got the laptop in here, you got the liquid in here, you got everything you need to get started. So first, we have the XMG o Oasis water cooler. So let me move the lights so we get a little better angle. There it is right there. So this is uh, this is gonna be the, the cooler. We're gonna unbox this in a moment. Let's just get everything out of the box first so you can see what everything, what's all included. You got the laptop. This has got the uh, the power brick. It's a nice black mat uh, box with no designs. Very clean looking. We've got our distilled water for our cooler. So we gotta take the uh, the bubble wrap out. Shwam. So there's your distilled water, and you're only supposed to use distilled water in this. You're not supposed to use liquid cooling coolants in any way, um, so just keep that in mind. So here is, I believe we're gonna use this to fill the water cooler, a little bulb sponge thing. It's like, an, uh, it's like one of those ear, cooler, uh, <laughs> ear washer tool things. <laughs> All right, uh, so then we got a microfiber cable here, and this is to, you can use this to clean up any excess water. Not sure what the brush is for, but they include a brush. All right, and uh, we've got a little stopper right there and another little stopper right here. These can be used, I believe, in the HDMI and USB-C ports if you want to stop any water from getting into those near the water cooler port. Just they, they include those as a bonus. Though I don't think you really have to do that. Maybe during initial setup in case you do it wrong or something. All right, we got our water loop. Uh, right here, this connects the laptop to the water cooler. And now let's go ahead and get into XMG Oasis. So this is the going to be the, the water cooler itself. I did open this up. So what? So it's not going to be quite packaged exactly, but I was just kind of trying to get a feel for everything I'll have to do with this thing. Um, but here's what it looks like inside the box. And so it's got its own little black shroud. Just like that. All right, so we're gonna set this down right here. We've got extra uh, O-rings. This will be in case uh, you need to replace the O-rings in your nozzles here or on this side. 
And uh, then we got an extra, a whole entire replacement for this head. If you need to replace the whole head, you've got a replacement. How cool is that? And then we also have a funnel. This will help us fill up our water cooler, I guess. That's good. We're going to need that. And we don't need, we, we won't need these. We can put these back in the box. While we're at it, let's go ahead and take this off. So these have little screw covers to prevent the water from leaking out if you're not using it. And right there, a little bit of water is coming out already. Just put the new nozzles on here. So that way it's kind of sealed up again. All right, so these just screw on there. Do not use a wrench to over tighten these. You can break them, they're just plastic, you know? So just finger tighten them just a little bit, not too tight. They should be just fine at that point, all right? So if a little bit of water leaks here and there, it's no big deal, as long as it doesn't get onto any electronics that are active and turned on. Still not sure exactly what this is for. That's interesting. All right, so um, next let's take a look at the laptop. Let's put this stuff to the side for a moment. Whoa, boom. All right, so we got uh, some nice layered packaging here. We've got a foam topper. We've got an XMG mouse pad, which is pretty cool. All right, so there's the mouse pad. Nice and smooth, and you got a rubbery surface on the bottom. We'll use that today when we're playing games. Here's the laptop itself. It is wrapped in another layer. All right, and we've got a plastic wrap on top of this. Whoa. What? And uh, notice that currently this is badgeless. There's no markings on what brand it is. So if you'd like a nice clean laptop with no branding, there you go. Um, you can see the ports on the right. We got ourselves an SD card slot, two USB 3.2s. We've got a vent port uh, with exhaust fins on the, the right and back. And notice there are big beefy ones, right? They're not smaller, thinner ones like some of them out there. Then we've got our water intake, USB-C, HDMI, uh, Ethernet. Unfortunately, the Ethernet is on the lower side, that, which might require you to lift the laptop up to unplug. We got a power adapter port. And then on the right side, there is a port right here, but I'm not sure what it is. It doesn't look like USB-C. Uh, USB 3.2, and then we got a mic port, uh, and then our headset port. So double double ports here, which is nice if you need to do multiple audio in sources. Um, and when we open it up, and we got a nice microfiber cloth on the keyboard, and the key uh, the touchpad is also very large, and it comes with a cover. This cover explains that you can deactivate half of the keyboard by tapping in the top right. And if you tap in the top left, it'll de deactivate the whole touchpad. So you double tap twice on the top left to deactivate everything, double tap on the top right to deactivate just the right half if you find that you're accidentally touching this touchpad on the right side. This touchpad is the second largest touchpad behind Razer. Like this is an enormous touchpad, very nice and smooth. And we've got a membrane keyboard here today. And this is the, uh, I believe the like European layout. So the, the the enter key is a bit different. And then the shift over here has a backspace. So I have to be careful when I'm typing not to press shift, which is kind of a pain in the butt, but it's okay, it's whatever. Inside of here, we have our power cable. All right. And then we also got a bottle opener. They include the i9 NVIDIA sticker. This is kind of funny. Uh, most people, I think, don't want these on their computers, but some do, it just depends. But you got GeForce RTX. You got the Core i9, you got the Nahemic audio sticker, and then you even have the G-Sync sticker. I like that they're not on the laptop and you can choose to put them on there if you want. Looks like we've got a flash drive. I'm not sure what the flash drive is for and or if it's gonna come on every single one. I'm assuming this is a backup of drivers at least, maybe even a backup install of Windows. All right, and here's the power brick. This power brick is very much like the Lenovo power brick that I've had. Uh, it's very thin, making it easy to pack into bags. 
uh, but it is very wide and tall. So it's not as small as the Razer Power Bricks, but it's quite a bit smaller um, compared to like the GT77 Power Brick. Before we do anything else, let's take the bottom of the laptop off as we do here on these unboxings. Let's check out the internals of this laptop and then we will try setting up the water cooler, all right? So we'll just go ahead and go all the way around here. I gotta say, it feels very premium being the, the bottom being metal. Okay, so I think we're onto the last screw. And so far, all of these screws are the same size. So you may not have to worry about which screw goes into which hole as much. We are opening a door to Into the AM shirts right now. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, there is Into the AM shirts. Links in the description, 10% off if you do use the link. And it does help support me as a creator if you do use it. So I love their shirts. I'm gonna try to order some more actually here soon. Get some more variety for the stream. All right, so we're just gonna try to get into the side here. No pop-up screw that I can see. So, but it's not like the gap, There's, it's not too tight. I am noticing it's kind of taking a little, the metal bits that are taking some of the plastic off of my pick though. All right, so we, in order to take this off, we gotta take these two screws right here off. All right, so initial quick impressions are that you guys could definitely uh, maximize the space in this laptop a little bit more by putting in some more, like, I don't know. There's a lot of open space here. That's just, that's what I'm noticing right away. I feel like either you guys could make this laptop chassis thinner or you could put in like two more SSD slots or uh, bigger speakers or something here to maximize the usage of the space. That was kind of my initial impressions pulling it off here. But yeah, so that's just after like opening what, what, what have we opened up, 15, 20 laptops this year? This is the most open space I've seen in a laptop so far. They need to make this laptop this thick to get all of the cooling components in here, but the, the internal spacing of everything, I feel like there's potential to add more features here into this ch chassis if they're gonna keep it this large. What do we got here? We got our down firing speakers here and here. And they're pretty beefy large speakers. I'm curious to see how they sound. We got a 99 watt hour battery here, battery connector here. We've got our heat pipe going along this section. We've got our water cooling loop right here. I'll, I'll focus a little bit more on the water cooling and everything a little bit later. Let's focus on the uh, the SSDs, the RAM, and the Wi-Fi first. So we've got a Crucial 5 Plus for our SSD. It's a one terabyte. And for our Wi-Fi, looks like it's an Intel Wi-Fi AX211, kind of what I was expecting. Uh, so it's an AX211 Wi-Fi chip right here. And you can swap that out or upgrade that if you want. We've got an empty SS, uh, empty M.2 slot right here. Let's take a look at what RAM we have. Uh, well, this is actually 16 gigs. I think it comes with only two 8 gig sticks, but it's SK Hynix, 1RX8 PC5 5600. Not the fastest RAM, but that's faster than what we've seen in a lot of the units uh, so far this year. Almost everything from Asus this year is only doing 4,800, right? So we've got this dedicated heat pipe. I believe this is hitting VRMs up here. I'm not sure, what is this hitting up here? Uh, I believe that's VRMs though. And then we've got our two RAM slots, upgradable of course, and our heat pipe here goes all the way around. So we have two heat pipes hitting this, this uh, vent exhaust over here. We have three heat pipes hitting this rear exhaust. And you can see they each have their own dedicated fins. Uh, we've got two shared heat pipes going across to the GPU over here with two heat pipes hitting this fan exhaust and then three heat pipes hitting this exhaust. Our water cooler loop goes over all of this, uh, over mainly the GPU, right? This is our GPU right here. The cooling solution for the water cooler is primarily focused on the GPU, right? Like these two shared heat pipes between the CPU and GPU are gonna help boost the CPU, but you need this fan running right here if you want to get your maximum CPU performance, even if you're on a water cooling solution. So if you're doing tons of CPU loads all the time, just know that you're gonna need at least one of your fans going pretty often at least uh, to maximize your CPU performance. I'm pretty sure that's a fair assessment, though Tom can correct me if I'm wrong. 
Uh, maybe we'll find out right here in a little bit when we get this thing fired up and going. So that's the internal analysis. It looks pretty promising in terms of cooling, uh, especially when you have the water cooling going. Without the water cooling, I would say this thermal solution is just is is very good or good, but but not like an exceptionally great uh, thermal cooling solution. With the water cooling, it's gonna be it should be exceptionally good, especially for the GPU performance, and that's the key here. Why this laptop could have the most powerful GPU out of all laptops because of this water cooling loop right here. Um, and that's going to let the VRMs and the voltages and that the GPU hits go higher. Hopefully, the clock speed can then boost higher. And therefore, hopefully, we'll see additional levels of real-world performance uh, that we haven't seen in some of the other laptops. I would, I would, the other thing that you really got to focus on is these RAM slots right here. Okay, These RAM slots, they're upgradable up to 64 uh, megahertz on the, the RAM. So DDR5, 6400. And that is gonna potentially boost our CPU bound gaming performance uh, noticeably, okay? So let's go ahead and get the lid back on and get this thing fired up our sides. We probably wanna start with the back. I imagine we wanna make sure that our, our loops, our, our, our round circles here, our loops are in, and then probably work from back to front is probably the way we wanna go when reassembling this laptop. If you don't do it in the correct way, you might get all everything popped in and then the loops are like pressed against the outside of the circle inside the laptop. I could see it perceivably happening, but hopefully not. So it feels like from the outside feel of this laptop, it feels very tanky and good because of the metal bottom and metal top. But this backside is all plastic right here, okay? So just keep that in mind. And this side thing right here, this appears to be, is this metal? That appears to be metal on the side. Yeah, I think this is metal over here too. So interesting mix of plastic and metal on this. It's time to set up the water cooler. Ooh, dun, dun, dun. So the way this water cooler works is you take the laptop power adapter, you plug the laptop power adapter into the back of the water cooler, then you daisy chain this cable into the back of the laptop with the power, uh, the water adapter thing here too. So you plug both into the laptop from this water cooler, all right? All right, and so we're now we're plugged in there. So we're gonna plug that into here. And we're gonna take our reservoir and we're gonna put it into the back of the laptop here, all right? You wanna make sure that you're not uh, in there part of the way there. You wanna make sure you're all the way snugged in there. All right, and it is magnetic, okay? So, and when it gets in there, it's in there pretty good, but it can just, you can just pull it off. So you, you're gonna wanna be careful not to have it pop off while you're you know, pumping water through the system. This will come on and pop off just like that, all right? You don't wanna disconnect this when your uh, XMG Neo is pumping. Um, I'm not sure, I think it might automatically shut off if that situation does happen, but it's still uh, not ideal because you're gonna get some water leakage at least. Um, and if it doesn't shut off, you might end up shooting water everywhere. But I'm pretty sure Tom could let us know about how that's supposed to work. We've got this little rubber guy. We're gonna put that over. It's, I, I would probably do this only the first time. Or maybe if you just don't plan on ever using these ports, you can keep this in here. It'll prevent dust from getting in there too. All right, so we got a little prevention there in case any water on our first attempt has any issues. Um, this is the dis industry grade distilled water that we get with the XMG Oasis. I'm assuming this comes with a normal Oasis. This is the refill port right up here. You can just use your fingernail to get that guy up and off. We've got a little funnel. This comes with the XMG Oasis. Uh, so there's the funnel. There is like, there's supposed to be a little measurement thing in the front. I'm probably gonna have to get a bottle or I'll have to get something else. Uh, basically right now, I'm filling up by using this bulb to transmit water from one to the other. I don't know if this is really the optimal. You could probably pour right into here, but it's a little bit riskier. I'm gonna look for the water level indicator on this thing. It's kind of hard to see. Right now we're about 80% full. Uh, we need to go a little bit higher. All right, so we're at the maximum line now, or just a hair underneath the maximum line. All right, so next is to press the power button for five seconds. Oh wait, now we gotta, we gotta re-plug in. All right, we're plugged back in. All right, now we gotta press the power button. 
Let me restore the reservoir cap just to make sure. I don't know. I don't want any water shooting anywhere, so I don't think it would. But one, two, three, four, five. I hear it. There it goes. We are going. It's moving. I can hear it flowing. Here, I'm gonna move the mic. Pretty cool, pretty cool. All right. Um, all right, so Oasis will automatically leave liquid input mode after a few cycles. Press and hold the power button again for five seconds to repeat this operation. Running multiple cycles might help push all remaining air bubbles out of the loop, resulting in quieter operation. When everything is done, recap the refill port, check all the connections of the loop for any residual leakage. There should be no there should not be any liquid drops on the chassis or on the surface below. All right, so just checking to make sure we don't have any leakage. I see no leakage, no water going anywhere. All right, so we are not quite to maximum yet. We gotta go a little bit more. But you know, this doing this has certainly been not bad at all. It's been pretty easy to do. So using a flashlight, I can kind of see where the water level is pretty clearly. All right, so we're just a hair under Maximum now. We'll replace the water there. Take this water out and voila! Haha, <laughs> okay, I think that's that's good. We're making good progress here. We're gonna need to make sure that our Bluetooth is enabled. Bluetooth is on. Press the power button on the XMG Oasis unit. The indicator on the button will start pulsating the blue color. Right now it's purple. Interesting. Press the power button on the XMG Oasis unit. It's gonna start pulsating a blue color. All right, so I'm gonna press it. Nothing happened with a quick press. A long press? Uh, I'm not seeing much happen there, all right? I'm just getting the solid purple status from the from the XMG Oasis. All right, so I have clicked, I went ahead and clicked the reset button right here, and it says status disconnected now. All right, so we're not connected to any laptop with it. That's good, right? And then we want to click connect or we want to, ah, there we go. Okay, so now it's flashing blue. We are flashing blue. It says device is ready. We'll click connect. Uh, I'm guessing we need to go in here and we need to connect. Which one of these do we need to connect though? Is it USB receiver? The Oasis unit is flashing blue now. We have a blue flashing light, which is what we need. All right, well, we'll see if we see anything with Oasis. It says cooling system. I'm guessing that's it. <laughs> cooling system is now connected. It says is connectable. That's not connected, right? It says the cooling system LTC is con is paired here. So drop down menu in the control center. Oh, right here. Ah, okay. So that's something you guys can optimize for your software. You have to select it out of this list now that we've connected to Windows. And then we hit connect and now we're connected. And we are in profile auto right now. All right, so I clicked liquid input mode right here, and now system is in liquid input mode. Yeah, certain angles are a lot quieter. Right here, we're going to disconnect. We are now disconnected. So we have, uh, we have disconnected the Oasis. We're not connected to it with Bluetooth. We're going to unplug the back of the Oasis here. All right, so we're gonna disconnect the back of the Oasis. We have no power now to the Oasis, so it cannot flow in yet. No extra water can flow. And let's grab one of the microfiber cloths that they gave with the laptop. We'll just put this down over here, just in case. And we're gonna grab it. So you grab it by the plastic ends and pull back. Literally no drops or anything came out. There was like a little droplet there still is a little droplet right inside of here, but it's super, super minor. All right. So now if we wanted to get everything back connected, we want to connect, we connect the water port magnetically, plug this back together and plug it back in right here. All right, so now the Oasis, uh, we can press on a tap, I believe on the Oasis. So yeah, you do, uh, you press it for one second if you want to open it up. And then now that we've got it connected, we uh, just select the Bluetooth here and we click connect and now we're connected to the Oasis. Okay, perfect. So we got all the functionality as expected going now. The question is, what's the performance lack? <laughs> okay, uh, no, but we also wanna understand the settings here for the Oasis. So here is the Titan. So XMG Neo 17 
And this is the Titan GT77. You can see it's quite a big difference in size with the Titan being much deeper and uh, about a half inch wider. Here is the Strix G18. You can see the XMG Neo 17 is a little bit narrower again, a little bit narrower and a little bit less deep. Here is the Blade 16. You can see it's quite a bit smaller than the Neo 17, both in width and in depth. And here's the Alienware M uh, M16. The M16 is deeper, but not as wide. Uh, Tom says, unfortunately, ultimately it's a matter of personal consideration on how much one is comfortable and confident in using the laptop safely with on the move with liquid remaining inside. You may lean towards leaving the water in the laptop for short mobile durations, but you have to take extra care in handling it for longer transports or prolonged mobile use. It is clearly recommended to drain the water. Yeah, to me, to me that says this is not the ideal laptop for a college student. So there's Windows Hello. Let's see if it logs me in. Do, 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 come on, you can do it. There we go, all right. A little bit slower than what some of the other laptops for Windows Hello were doing, but um, it got me in there. So right now we're disconnected. Let's see if we can go ahead and connect or not. I don't see any RGB. Okay, so you have very quiet, quiet and balanced for the fan profile on the, on the water cooler. And there is a fan inside that water cooler. That's how it works. But I'm guessing we're, we're going to try leaving it on auto or I guess, Tom, if you can tell me what the vet, vest profile is you want me to do it on. Should we do uh, application profile? Should we do overboost? And for the XMG Oasis, leave it on auto or balanced? Seems like balanced is the lo uh, loudest. I'm gonna put it to auto. And then here's the audio. I'm gonna be about uh, one foot away from the XMG Oasis. I'm gonna set it to balanced. I think during this initial startup phase, it may be a little bit louder as it gets everything going. And if you want performance profiles, overboost. Okay, so we're gonna go to overboost in our performance profiles. All right, that's gonna be our, I think our maximum performance setting. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the rest of the XMG Oasis thing here for the control center. All right, so under general settings, we have a Windows key lock, disable pop-ups, number pad lock, FN lock, touchpad toggle enables the toggling in the corners of the touchpad, powered USB when in hibernation or shutdown so you can use this to charge your phone or something while the device is off. Device manager, you can disable and enable Wi-Fi, wi Bluetooth, webcam, and the touchpad. GPU settings, we have NVIDIA Optimus disabled. This option disables NVIDIA Optimus on the internal display, on equals direct graphics connection, is off. Off equals NVIDIA Optimus will have your graphics from iGPU to GPU requires a reboot when switching. So this basically puts us into, I believe, dedicated GPU only mode right now. So that's probably the setting we want to test with. You can remap some keys if you need to. Under the performance section, you have a performance profiles, balanced, enthusiast, and overboost. Application profiles, you have uh, the same thing. Here's our XMG Oasis control. Should I leave this on auto? Advanced Optimus is currently on, left, switch left equals off. So you're saying that I have it, it's, it's showing as it being off. That looks like it's on now. Oh, you, we want to disable NVIDIA Optimus, yes. So I'm, I'm guessing, leave Oasis control on auto. Okay, I will leave the Oasis control on auto. So that makes this thing a lot quieter when it's on auto. We'll have to see how loud it gets. Let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of this laptop here. All right. We've got a membrane keyboard here. I highly recommend getting the Cherry MX keyboard. Instead, it is a much better experience, in my opinion. You can certainly look and see the keys, but this is probably the probably the dimmest backlight on any laptop so far I've tested this year. The keyboard itself with a membrane keyboard will work, but I don't know, this these keys, this doesn't this doesn't feel that good to me. It feels okay. Like I this is probably the worst keyboard I've tested this year so far. Um but I liked the Cherry MX keyboard that we had in uh, when, I, when I was at CES. That one is a much better keyboard in my opinion. This one will work if you end up buying a laptop with this layout, but it is not a high-end keyboard and not that 
good. At least you have good functionality. You have a full size number pad over here on the right. So full size number pad, that's good. You got a lot of functionalities with the FN key and all of the secondary functions on the keyboard are lit up, which is good. But like I said, I can barely see the backlight keyboard. It's just not that stylish or very premium feeling for a almost $4,000 laptop. So that's where I would say, uh, get the Cherry MX keyboard and then you at least get your money's worth, you know? Highly recommended to get that Cherry MX keyboard. So you gotta remember this thing's got a water cooler attached to it. We have a little bit of water leakage here on the back. Not too much, but there is some there. So let me grab a paper towel real quick. One paper towel will easily absorb all of this water. That said, I'm guessing what we had is the connector came undone just a little bit there as I was trying to turn the laptop around or we had just a little bit of water leaking um, for a little while. Anyway, the RGB on the back, you can see them. They've got these little RGB light bars on the left and right sides. It's not that bright and not that noticeable, but I'm glad they have them. Uh, I kind of think they need to add a little bit. They need to, they still need to revamp them, I think, to be cooler. I mean, my take on this laptop is definitely that this is not for someone that is you know, looking to get the most stylish, most premium experience. I think this is a laptop designed for someone who wants the most possible performance. So that's what I'm really concerned with here. A little bit of water leakage like that is not that big a deal, but this is why you gotta be paying attention to your, your plugins and make sure everything is seated correctly and you don't want to have the thing running and then you lose a lot of water like that, right? So it feels very firm, very firm. Going around, a little bit of flex here. Very firm, very firm. A tiny bit of flex there, not much. Extremely firm, extremely firm, extremely firm. Very firm, a tiny bit of flex here. A little bit of flex in the middle. Honestly, that's some of the least amount of flex I've seen in a laptop. That is very rigid. Coming through the middle, very little flex. Uh, Overall, very minimal flex for a middle of the laptop. I'm being honest, that's, that's very good rigidity. I'm impressed with the rigidity on this machine. Um, now let's see if we can do the uh, deactivating half of the touchpad. So the way this was supposed to work is you tap on the right over here and it should light up the light, there it is. Now this part of the touchpad no longer works and this part of the touchpad still works. You can see my mouse working here. I go to the right side and it doesn't do anything. All right, and then we can double tap on the right over here, or sorry, we can double tap on the left side over here, and now the whole touchpad is disabled. It's just an external mouse now. So if you're getting accidental touches, we've got keyboard backlight customization. We can do different animations with wave, breathing, a static color, um, a mixture of colors, and flashing, and musical-based. I'm guessing that's based on your audio of the laptop itself. Yes, so it flashes with the audio. And uh, we'll just leave it out wave and highest brightness. You can also customize the light bar in the back to be different colors if you want it to be blue or whatever, but it's kind of hard to see those light bars. They're not very bright, if I'm being honest. Battery, high capacity mode. This has high charging speed and maximum capacity. Other profiles might extend the life of the battery over the years. Balanced mode, ideal balance between battery capacity and life. Uh, I'm guessing eco mode, balance mode, Windows is still gonna show 100% capacity in balance and eco mode, though it's gonna limit the actual capacity of, that takes place in the background on the firmware level and not visible in the operating system. So I'm guessing you'd be able to see the wattage on your like HW info, but I'm curious how, how what each one of the is. I'm assuming high capacity is 100%, balance mode is probably like 80%, eco is probably like 50%, but we'll do high capacity mode for now. I don't know exactly what those numbers are. Here's our specs. We got an i9 13900HX, RTX 4090. We got an Intel UHD, 32 gigs of RAM, 5600 on the RAM DDR5. And we got a one terabyte drive. Uh, here's some CPU specs and we got our about page, which is how you can change the English. Right now in performance mode, we're in auto. We are connected to the XMG Oasis. I'm gonna try to make sure we don't have any other leaks. I probably just didn't have the thing all the way in or when I moved the laptop, it kind of leaked as we were uh, as we were going so all right so we are done with the test let's see what our results were so you got to keep in mind as always my spider 5 elite underestimates the color gamut by about eight to nine percent somewhere in that range right here we've got srgb at 91 percent so that is the uh stated amount pretty much for what 
they claim Adobe RGB 72, P3 gamut, gamut is 72. So that's about what I was expecting. So it's about 80% on the Adobe and P3 color gamut, somewhere in those ranges. Our brightness is 18 on the low end with high levels of contrast on the low end, 372 on the high end at 100%, which is very good, uh, but not as high as say the competitor panels today. So 372 is still very good. Contrast ratio is only 730 to one, which is not as high as I would say would be ideal. Um, I feel like the contrast ratio should be a little bit better. Um, and I don't really see the low contrast ratio on the display itself, but it's interesting that it, it rated it so low. Okay, so here we are in the NVIDIA control panel. Uh, manage display mode. Here you can select uh, NVIDIA Optimus or NVIDIA GPU only mode. So we're just gonna select NVIDIA GPU only mode. Changing the multiplexer to integrated discrete might cause certain applications to crash. Would you like to continue? Yes, and we're gonna apply. See if NVIDIA Optimus is working here for us. Beautiful. We are now in NVIDIA GPU mode, all right. Is going, and I'm just checking to make sure we're not leaking again. We're not leaking. This is, a, just for reference, this is a very similar panel uh, in terms of color gamut and brightness to what we had on the HP Omen, which is still a pretty, it's a pretty good panel, all right? So now let's go ahead and test the speakers. Right now, the uh, XMG Oasis is spinning up and I can hear it. And it's interesting because it, I would say it's louder than most laptops are on idle. And I, right now the laptop is not under load, so I don't know why um, we're getting the pump to go. We could, we, if we wanted to, we could tell it to go to very quiet or quiet mode. I might want to try turning it off for the speaker test here because you might hear the pump. To turn it off, is it best to just hold the power button or just to unplug it? I'm just gonna unplug it for now. Here is Roar by Peter Spacey, not by Katy Perry. This is Half-Life by Faded Aeon. And this is La La La. Okay, so um, the speakers are surprisingly loud. Um, one of the loudest speakers I've heard this year the clarity on the mids and highs, I think, could definitely be better, and the bass could come through better. It's a loud volume. It's kind of it's it's a it's a weird in between where you get really good volume, but I feel like the clarity and the bass and the mids and highs could all be better. I'm thinking I would give it like an eight point three on the speaker scale, because the it's loud, but the mids mids lows and highs could be better. You know, so it, it'll fill a room better than most, and you'll easily overwhelm any fan noise the laptop's making um, with your game audio or whatever movie you're watching or whatever. So um, I love that it's loud. It's just not a very premium sounding speaker, but the loudness is phenomenal. There we go. And now inside of the control center, we will click connect. Oh, we're already connected again. It reconnected automatically. That's nice. All right, we're gonna verify that our tubes are connected, our power cables and everything are seated. Everything looks good back there. 
Uh, let's go ahead and try out Cinebench R23. I gotta say the water cooler is definitely a little bit louder than I thought it was gonna be. Cause just cause of the pump, you can definitely hear the pump. It's definitely not as loud as the loud whooshing of a fan noise on like max fans of a laptop, but it's a different type of sound. And I think it kind of reverberates a little bit on the table that we're on right now. The CPU performance is not gonna be bad, but it's not gonna be exceptional. The way you would think a water-cooled laptop might be. That said, can we, is Intel XTU undervolting uh, unlocked out of the box? So we got 30,116, 30.1K for our opening score. And let's go ahead and reset this and just check out what, our, what we're pulling for our package numbers. We're doing 143 watts of power right now. Our temps are hitting 87 degrees on the package, 80 on the, the cores. And our core clocks, if we open those guys up, we'll see if we have a good core clock speeds or not. Let's go ahead and run it again. We got 29.7K that time. CPU clock speeds, 3.99, 3.3 on our E cores. This is pretty much what I would expect for a moderate level of performance. And our temps are not bad at all. We're not reaching thermal throttling levels and we're doing a good amount of wattage to the CPU at 147. Obviously not as high as what we saw on stuff like the GT77 Titan or the GE78. Those are doing like up to 200 watts initially and then they throttle down. But the bigger question is what's this gonna get in like a 10 minute score? And we're gonna do, if we can, a basic undervolt. So uh, we're gonna do a 10 minute test without undervolting then if it's not unlocked. Just know that with unlocking it, I would expect this number to go up by five to 10%. So let's go ahead and get our 10 minute test in and see what we get for a 10 minute test and what we get for our averages. We're also gonna reset. We just reset. So we're gonna be able to see what we average for our temps and our clock speeds during this 10 minute test. Cool, so we got our test going. So far we're doing 3.99 gigahertz on average on our P cores, 3.3 gigahertz on our E cores, just like on our short term test. 88 degrees on our CPU package. 82 degrees average for our core temps. We're currently at 85 though. Temps are climbing up a bit right now. We need to raise the back up on the laptop. I also just realized. I can feel the fans going and hear the fans just minorly. Interestingly enough, the um, I would say the water pump is a little bit louder than uh, the fans are right now. I can barely hear the fans kind of doing a subtle whoosh. So far, we've not had any additional leaking, I don't think. Yeah, I think we're good back here. Everything's looking good. 148 watts is very good. We have not slowed down our wattage yet. That's good. That's providing us a nice solid 4.0 uh, 4 on our CPU P cores, 3.3 on our E cores. And we are now th almost three minutes into the test. So if it is gonna drop in wattage, I would expect it to drop in wattage sometime soon. So we are two minutes and 50 seconds in, our CPU is a rock st rock solid steady, 4.0 gigahertz on the P cores across all of the P cores, 3.27 to 3.29 on the E cores for our seven and a half minute average so far. That's phenomenal. Core temperatures have averaged 86. I love to see the average being below 90. And right now we're just a little bit below 90 on the actual, uh, Temperatures there. Our CPU packages are at 94, CPU package at 94. Uh, it's a little bit higher than I would prefer. Definitely would rather that would be like 90, but we're not thermal throttling uh, hardcore. We are hitting some thermal throttling here on some of the cores, but it's not like, it's not like hardcore thermal throttling, right? It's, we're averaging a good amount of wattage. And if we could just undervolt this sucker, ooh, we would definitely be able to pull probably 33K, I bet in a 10 minute score. If, if, we have good, if we have good silicon lottery results, um, but probably 32K would be most, at least for most people. Overall, I'm, I'm impressed. This is, doing, um, this is doing more wattage in the long term than the GT77 Titan, but the fact that we don't have undervolting support is gonna kill the score compared to the Titan because it's more important that you're able to undervolt than you're able to get a higher, slight, slightly higher wattage. Um, now, once we get on air, I'm curious to see what our results are because that'll be very different. Boom, oh man, we almost broke, we almost broke 30K. That's the basically 30K though, 29,999, which is very good for a 10 minute score. 
that beats the uh, that beats the Scar 16, Scar 18. Very, it's that's that's very good. Uh, I will say that I'm impressed for a 10 minute score, though it's not as good as what some of the laptops are when we undervolt them. Without undervolting, though, that's a very good score. So we need to go. I'm looking to do performance, XMG Oasis. We want to that turns off the Oasis. Now we're gonna find out what kind of performance we can get, uh, at least what kind of temperatures we can get with just air. And we're still in performance profile over boost. Okay, so we're in the highest performance profile. And I'm not gonna let the test go for the full 10 minutes. Let's just let it go for like two or three minutes and kind of let it saturate the heat. Our temperatures are now hitting 95 degrees on our package, 89 on the core temp. We're doing 141 watts, which is a little bit lower, which shows that we're being thermal throttled downwards, which is what I would expect in a chassis like this. Given the air cooling that we have, this is still pretty good results. Let's see how it does after like three minutes, right? That's what I wanna see three minutes later, what's it gonna be like? So let me put this Spider 5 Elite away again. We're down to 135 watts. Our average is coming down on our wattage. So when we had the water cooler active, we were doing a higher level of wattage because we were doing 148 nonstop, which is a very good amount of wattage going through the CPU. 134 is still pretty good. My Blade 18 can only do 130, but my Blade 18, because it's undervolted, is still doing like 4.2 gigahertz, which is like 0.4 gigahertz higher than what this is doing right now. But it's also a higher silicon because it's a 19... 13950HX instead of 13900HX, which is a, a slightly lower bend CPU. Undervolting is gonna tremendously help boost performance here when you look at our package temps and core temps. 130 watts of dedicated CPU power when on air should be pretty close to sustainable, at least in air-conditioned environments. And about 3.7 to 3.8 gigahertz is what I would expect to average in these kinds of loads. Let's go to XMG Oasis, uh, let's connect, and it's automatically turning on the pump because it detects that we need a little bit more uh, cooling. I'm gonna go ahead and pin this to the taskbar. Beautiful. All right, so there's your Cinebench R23 performance, basically right at 30K. DLS sauce on. Uh, let's make sure we're set to ray tracing on ultra. There we go, ray tracing set to ultra, everything's set to ultra. Frame generation enabled, DLSS on quality. This is very good performance, out the gate at least. I wanna make sure the water cool is going. Yeah, I can hear that water cooler. Um, I can only hear that water cooler right now if I get up close to it. I can't hear it basically at all though right now. Um, sitting back here. If you were to position the water cooler like at the back of your desk, um, it would be very hard to hear it if you're sitting like, you know, a couple feet in front of your desk. Yeah, I don't think these FPS numbers are correct. I think I think frame generation must have set our DLSS to auto or something, but we'll see. Um, look at our GPU, it's boosting to 2440. I just realized our GPU clock is going bananas. That is super high, and we've not even over OC'd this at all. Um, DLSS was set, was set to auto, okay? So that's that's basically with DLSS on balanced. It says DLSS is on qu uh, quality, but we need to go and apply it, and now it should be on, uh, uh, now it should be off. Okay, so these numbers are uh, much more in line with what we're expecting to see. There we go, there we go. All right, so for reference, let's do some reference numbers. All right, reference numbers. What did we get in some of the other laptops? I'm gonna pull it up, the benchmark results. So... Let's see here. Hmm, what's the best one to pull up? We'll just do, we'll do the GT77 and the SCAR18 again. All right, so, Cy uh, Cyberpunk 2077, GT77 got 112, the SCAR18 got 116. 
nine eight. So one thirty one. That is fourteen more FPS than the Scar eighteen and eighteen more FPS than the GT seventy seven. All right. We do have new drivers on this laptop compared to those laptops. Keep that in mind. That is phenomenal gameplay. Uh, phenomenal improvement. I know the Blade 18 also scored a bit higher. Uh, I think memory speed may be a real benefit in Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, here is the results. If you want to compare and contrast. So we have the GT 77 112. Scar 18 116 right here. All right. So DLSS is on quality. Our graphics preset is ultra. We want no vertical sync. 240 hertz refresh rate. This is all correct. All right, so our 1% lows are not doing amazing here. We've got 30 FPS for our 1% lows. That's pretty typical, though, of the i9 chips. Um, right now, we're doing 100 watts to the CPU, 166 watts to the GPU. Combined workload, 250 to 260, 270 watts. This is pretty common in these laptops. A lot of the laptops pull this high a wattage, but um, interestingly enough, the Blade 18... Uh, pulled quite a bit lower wattage and yet had just as high of FPS. So I think there's some optimization on like the BIOS or firmware level going on here. Uh, either way, wow, our GPU temp is excellent at 65 degrees. Our CPU temp though is very spicy. So you gotta you gotta keep in mind this liquid cooler really doesn't favor that CPU that much. It's really focused around the GPU. I think that's why they changed the liquid cooler uh, to just go around the GPU so they could bump these GPU clocks. Jiminy Christmas, look at that. 2400 on the GPU clock. That is definitely the highest we've ever seen on the GPU clock in Dead Space um, on an RTX 4090. It typically is in like the 2200, maybe 2100 range. All right. So, okay. So, Dead Space, we're walking. Let's see what we get. What's the memory running at? The memory running is at 9,500, which is, that's an OC. That is higher than normal. 9,000 is the typical amount, right? So typical stock would be like 2,000 to 2,100 in here and 9,000 on the memory. So we already have, we have a baked in, I have not overclocked anything, right? Uh, this is the baked in over OC from XMG, all right? So there's our average, 123, 32, um, popping over to the Blade 18, this is the results right here from Dead Space, Dead Space, right here. 112 for the Scar 18, 130 for the GT 77. So this is a little bit behind the GT 77, 7 FPS behind the GT 77 here. Uh, I think that's because of the CPU here um, being lower wattage. Uh, though the GT77 didn't pull super high watts either. I think it's like an optimization issue or something. Very interesting results, though. Um, this did beat the SCAR 18, though, by about 10 FPS. I think the Blade 18 was right around this value. Almost exactly. Everything on Ultra, DLSL and quality. Let's see what we get. So far, some excellent FPS coming in here. Our GPU clock is much lower than it was in Dead Space. What did you find? Tracks. Only 21 megahertz on the GPU clock, which is interesting. 128 for our average. What does that God of War got 124 on the GT77 Titan. Scar 16 got 116. So um that might be a new record high i'm not sure i think the blade 18 and the omen 17 also scored in the 20s range i'm not sure exactly what those got we're gonna have to do a giant side-by-side -side comparison between all of these um this is an excellent score for god of war everything's on maximum ray tracing on quality uh dlss on quality ray tracing on ultra fil uh, frame generation enabled that's how we test this game Ooh, our GPU clock is boosting really high in this one. 2400. 2370. That's really good GPU clock. The Zephyrus M16 is in that price range. I just, I think the Zephyrus M16 could fit someone who wants something super portable, but it's hard for me to recommend it from a performance perspective because it's going to be so much low, lower performance. You really got to be focused on something that you want super portable, I guess, if you want to go the Zephyrus lineup. Um, otherwise I'm just like, maybe it's better just go to a 4080 version or maybe even a 4070 and just save some more money. I don't know.
Interesting. Mass just wanted to know why they're only going up to a 4070. And Tom said the risk to invest in a 4080 and 4090 main board is too high when you have to factor in the additional risk of supply chain bottlenecks on key parts, not just the CPU, but stuff around the CPU and delays. Uh, yeah, so the 4050, 4060, and 4070 this year use the same motherboard. And then the 4080, 4090 also use the same motherboard. So um, it's kind of like if you try to do one of the laptops, you either want to go for a 4080, 4090 combo and make that laptop all about 4080, 4090, or you want to go for the 4050, 4060 uh, range, uh, maybe 4070. You know, So that's basically, it, it reduces or increases the cost a lot if you're going to try to split between those two. So you kind of want to focus your price segments. You basically have to expect to sell a lot of laptops in both price categories if you're going to offer all five GPUs. Okay, so we're almost done with this test. 154. 154. That is a monster amount of performance here. Do I have Dying Light? So the SCAR 18 got 138 in this test. The GT77 got 128. So 154. Oh my goodness. That is a lot more than those. Um, that said, the Omen 17, the Blade 18 got, I think, 144. This is just a little bit better than what we got with the Blade 18 and Omen 17. So this, still, this is the highest we've ever had in Dying Light 2. Exclusive full screen, 240 hertz, quality DLSS, highest settings, ray tracing on ultra. All right, so taking a look at our performance here, our GPU is at a good starting temp at 64 degrees. CPU is 76 degrees. 2460 on our GPU clock. The GPU clock is at an insane level, especially considering, look at our wattage level. We're not even doing the full 175 watts here. Maybe because we're being CPU bound a little bit. Probably because we're being CPU bound a little bit. But our CPU is doing a lot of wattage, 104 watts, and it's still only 86 degrees so far. I wonder how hot it would get though in a long-term test. Uh, Mitchell says that you should test um, going to the same spot in the game with 16 by 10 then go to the same spot in 16 by 9 and you'll see more on the screen on 16 by 9 than 16 by 10. Uh, that is entirely going to depend on the game engine and the optimization of the game because I know that Fortnite players uh, were switching to 16 by 10 aspect ratios on purpose because they wanted more vertical viewing real, real estate, right? Wow, over 300 FPS starting. I think that's the first time we've seen a 300 at the start of this. How loud is the Oasis pump? So right now I can hear the Oasis pump over the fan noise. If I hold it right next to the Oasis pump, you'll hear it. But where I'm sitting right here, it sounds like a laptop that's on like medium low fans is basically the, the sound I'm getting, but it's definitely a different type of sound. It's more of an audible, like reverberating sound, right, where it's not as much a whoosh sound. Um, that said, I may not have everything perfectly optimized for the pump and everything, so. Um, compared to typical, like my typical benchmarking where I use like max fans, this is overall definitely quieter. Um, but like I said, it's a different type of audio that you're getting from the pump rather than fans. 173 for our average FPS. Bonkers, that is really good. 151 on the SCAR, 18. 169 on the GT77. So this got four higher than the GT77. All right, so we're on Ray Tracing Ultra P set. DLSS on quality, we're gonna go to display. Frame generation is on QHD plus at 16 by 10 aspect ratio. All right, so uh, here we are. We're gonna go ahead and do our test now. Right now, our GPU clocks aren't getting that high, which is interesting. Our performance though is very good. It's interesting how our wattage is almost never going above 170 in anything. Any of these tests, nothing over 170. 
It's always just uh, like 170 on the dot or lower, like 165 to 170, it seems like. Okay, so 118, 89, that's excellent 1% lows. So the Blade 18 got 113, it looks like. And the memory clock, you can see it, we're doing 2100 megahertz on the GPU. So this has higher boost clocks to the, to the GPU. And 113, so five more FPS here. If you can see that, that's the Blade 18 right there, benchmark result, 113.47. Our 1% lows were also much higher here. All right, so here's our FPS. This is uh, at least largely a CPU-based game. Um, whoa, it's interesting. In the top left, the FPS counter is saying like 900, 800. This down here is saying 600, though. A bit different. Is the frame metal or plastic? It looks like the keyboard deck is like a rubberized material. The top deck is metal and the bottom deck is metal. I'm thinking the middle deck here though is plastic. Is that right, Tom? And the back of the, the back rear part of the laptop's also uh, plastic where the ports are. So it's a mixture of metal and plastic on this laptop. But the, the rigidity on the laptop itself was excellent. It had very little flex. Tom says Brandon got it right. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's uh, it's very, it's a very. Uh, I think it's a very well built laptop overall. I don't see any weak points, and I think the hinge design looks like it's going to hold pretty well for a long time. Uh, does anyone know how good or bad the cooling in the Aura 17H and 17X is? So, uh, Demeter Writer, I've got a link to an uh, Aura 17H review at least. Uh, on my laptop list, but I've got an Aura 17X coming in. XMG said they're going to ship it to me in about a week. So it'll take a little longer than that to actually get here. All right, so we got 559, 559 for our test. That is excellent. 559.5, so I guess 560. I think that's the highest we've ever scored. So CSGO, 513. GT77 got 548. So that is uh, 11 FPS higher than the GT77. It's been interesting. I think the GT77's only won a couple games. They won Dead Space, and I'm not sure if it won any other games. It got close on a couple other games, I think. But uh, I think the Neo 17 so far has won more games uh, for highest performance than... So, 108, 56 for our 1% low. Extremely smooth gameplay the whole time. From Hogwarts Legacy, the SCAR 18 got 93. The GT77 got 78, though. I think that is a bugged score. So you're definitely gonna get more than that on the GT77 with updated settings or something or driver or something was going on there uh, for that game. And uh, so overall, phenomenal performance in Hogwarts. Wow. All right, so Hogsmeade. This is the best experience I've had so far in Hogwarts Legacy on a laptop. I don't know if it's a driver update or what exactly it is, but it's very smooth. 111.59. So we got three more FPS that run than we did in the first run. With the cooler so far, we've been in Hogwarts for what? Like a few minutes now? Our temps are pretty stable in like around 65 degrees. I'm gonna give it like another minute and then we'll go ahead and shut off the water cooler and let everything run on air. And then we'll see if we get any additional stuttering. We'll retest it to see what our FPS difference is. Very interesting though, result. Uh, very good performance here. And most importantly, the 1% lows are, are so much better. So here's our temps. We're like, for our CPU, we're in the high 80s. We tapped 90 a second ago. 66 degrees on the GPU. There's our rough temperatures. Now let's go ahead and alt tab. Let's go to the XMG Oasis. Let's disconnect that. That shuts off the Oasis, okay? So now I have no more Oasis going on in the background. Our temps are climbing right now. We were at 65, now we're at 74 on the GPU. You know, our performance hasn't really dropped that much. Maybe a little bit. Uh, looking at our temps now, we've broken 90. We're in 93 on our CPU. 
We're at 80 on our GPU now. Keep in mind, we are elevated a little bit on the back of the laptop, right? So I wanna point out right here that our CPU wattage did go down. We were doing, I think, 80 watts, 80, 90 watts on the CPU in this Hogmead, Hogsmeade section. And now we're only doing 53. And I wonder how much that's gonna affect our FPS, right? So if we start running around, we can probably go ahead and do a, a new follow-up test now. The laptop is not that loud. The fans themselves in fan only mode is not too loud right now. All right, so doing a run through right now, Let's see what we get with a run through now that we're on air. I gotta say our performance is still very good, even on air. So our performance did not go down on air versus liquid. Just the temps changed. Ooh, that is juicy. I love that. Oh, I love that a lot. Okay, so let's compare performance real quick. We got 93 on the SCAR 18, 78 on the GT 77. So. I'm curious to see what would we get on the GT77 if I retested it now with all the latest drivers and everything, but still very good performance and our temps are really not bad. Our GPU temp is getting a little spicy in the, getting into the low 80s there. I saw 81.9 there a second ago, but it's not like it's horrible. Uh, let's go ahead and flip the liquid cooler back on. I hear it going now. Let's watch the temperatures. Hopefully we can get down back to, what was it, 60? All right, so we went from 81, now down to 70. Notice our CPU boost went up back to 30 more FPS. You gotta love that. Or sorry, 30 more watts. We were at 55 or so, 50. Now we're doing 90. Our GPU temps are now in the 60s. That did not take long to cool down the laptop. Go to Control Center, Performance, Custom profile. Looks like custom profile is grayed out right now. Custom profiles is not letting me click it. I'm clicking it and nothing's happening. Okay, so here's the BIOS of the XMG Neo 17. i9-13900HX, 16 cores for efficiency, uh, eight P cores, 16 threads, 5600 on the memory frequency. Going into the advanced BIOS section here, we've got uh, lock, FN lock for F1 through 12. If you enable this, it switches it so all of these functions, that's nice. You can switch it so all of these functions right here become the primary function of the F1 through 12. I would actually prefer that. Passive cooling mode, when enabled fans will stop at very low temperatures, when disabled fans will keep running at low speed. Active performance cores, active efficiency cores, so this is you can disable the efficiency cores or the performance cores. Virtualization, enable, disable, VDM setup, network settings, profiles and recovery performance, Button operating mode, where operating mode is an overboost. Performance button does fan boost. Is that what you're telling me to hit, Tom? You want me to go to the performance button and then click fan boost? Or what do you want me to do? You wanna switch that to fan boost? Is that how we do max fans? Fan boost plus water, gotcha. Uh, is that, is fan boost gonna give us maximum fans basically? So right now you can switch it to be dynamic or GPU only. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and save changes and reset. Oh, we haven't really checked out the webcam. Let's check out the web camera. There's the webcam, folks. It's uh, the colors. I am sunburned like crazy or something. Um, that's what the photos look like after the fact. Maybe the worst webcam. I don't know, the SCAR 16 is competing with this one for the worst webcam of the year so far. I would definitely encourage you guys to get a better webcam. Um, the Windows Hello is nice though, but the color reproduction on this is really bad. I feel like you guys could improve this with some software updates, if I'm being honest. Um, Cause it, yeah, it looks like I'm literally just sunburned. So I'm on, my, I'm on the screen, so. Fan boost is on, can you hear it? I'm gonna put you next to the water cooler and the fans. So you see the mic right here. We're only a few inches away from the fans right now. I'm gonna turn the fans on. They have a nice low whooshing sound to these fans. They don't sound bad. All right, uh, excellent. So we've now, these and these fans are not as loud as like the GT77 fans. Oh my goodness, they're so much quieter. Okay, so we do have everything connected. We're in auto mode now with XMG Oasis. 
Everything's on high right now. All right, here we are. Oh, I love this. This is a great display for gaming. Esports, there's like no ghosting on this display at all. Even on maximum settings right now, we're hitting 240 FPS limit of the display. That is phenomenal. All right, so doing 240 FPS. Let's switch everything to low. I think that's the highest we've seen on max settings in Apex Legends. Man, this is so good. I think people are gonna love this, at least for esports games, this is gonna be like a phenomenal gaming laptop. Notice our temperatures are also really, really good in Apex Legends right now. Kelly gives you a new gun, basically. And I've got the speakers turned up now. Phenomenal. So, if you guys can't tell, but it makes a huge difference when I play Apex on a good laptop or a good display. It's enormous, the difference, when you're doing a competitive game like this. What a fantastic Apex Legends experience. Um, it does not get better than that for gaming laptops, except maybe going with a 480 uh, hertz display um, in like the Alienware M16 or M18. That's probably the only display that might be better for esports, or at least noticeably better. Like you might get better color gamuts, but in terms of response rate and tracking your enemies, it's really phenomenal here. All right, so loading up a song real quick and showing you guys the audio difference when you have Nahimic in a couple different audio modes. So right now we have effects on in Nahimic. All right, so we'll play Roar by Peter Spacey. It is a huge difference enabling the effects, but the effects were already enabled when we did our tests. But you can tune the, the, the sound a little bit uh, in those Nahimic profile settings. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, but when we did our audio test, it was already enabled. So just know that uh, this, this is a way to adjust your bass, your treble, and all of that. But yeah, this was already enabled when we did our audio test. It, it does make it sound so much better. It really does improve the audio. Looking at our time spy initial here, we're at 65 watts, 75 watts to the CPU, 169 watts to the GPU. Interesting enough, I don't think we've seen 170 watts yet, or 175 watts to the to the C, uh, to the GPU almost at all tonight. And yet the performance has been phenomenal. Uh, it's been really good. Out of the box here with no overclocking in Afterburner, we're doing 2250, which is about the same clock speed we saw from the GT77 Titan out of the box without any additional overclocking. Now, I know that there is some overclocking going on from the overboost mode from the control center. So I'm curious to know what uh, kind of overclock we got going right now and how much can we improve this? Can we take this... Uh, back up to all the way up to like say 2400 clock on the GPU. We'll see. So out of the box, uh, Niebuhr, you're right. We got a 500 OC on the memory clock. Um, it's normally 9,000 on the memory clock and it's uh, 9,500 out of the box. So, hey, look at, our, look at our wattage. Now we're doing 175 watts for the GPU finally. 
It's uh, that's a, the first time I think I saw 175 up there. So that's good. What do you guys think? What's it gonna be? Uh, I'm thinking like 2250, 23,000, 23,300 stock. Our CPU score 18,600. That's the highest CPU score from TimeSpy we've seen. And for the GPU score, that's the highest stock score, but this also has a pseudo overclock basically being applied. Let's up this OC. Let's see if we can do 225, all right? And let's do a memory clock. Uh, let's see if we can do 1,000. Almost all, almost all the laptops I've had so far this year have been able to do this. We bumped the clock speed by 75, and look at us. We're doing 2310, 2325. That's actually noticeably higher than what we had uh, earlier in the previous run, we were doing like 2200 something, like low 2200s. So our 75 OC is actually doing a pretty good job of boosting us up. Um, I'm pretty sure the GT 77 though was boosting closer and tapping into 2400 on the GPU clock. So we'll have to see, we'll have to see the final score. I mean, really, this, the clock speeds don't tell you 100% of the story, so it'll be very interesting to see what we get. Um, are we in max fans right now? Oh, we are not even on at max fans right now. Let's. Let, I've got max fans going now. But uh, we are on the water cooler, so that's even better than max fans, realistically. All right, we've got to do it again. Let's try it. Let's see if we can do... I don't think we'll be able to do 250. Let's, can we do 260? I don't think we'll be able to do 260. I think we'll be unstable at 260. Um, okay, so whoa, we still got a higher score, 23,833. I really want to crack 24,000. This is the highest we've ever gotten. 270, 275? Can we do 275? I would love to crack 24K because I've yet to crack 24K on any of the laptops. Like we are actually seeing increased clock speeds here. Uh, 23, 2340, 2370. So when I increased the clock speed, it actually did boost up. And so far, we're not seeing any artifacting with this much overclocking. That's incredible. Oh, I think we just crashed. It did not like 23. It did not like 3,000. All right, this is the last the last attempt. We'll see if we get through this run or not. We are crashed it. What are the cons of this laptop versus the competition? Arguably, the biggest pro to this laptop, and we'll just go right into saying it, incredible performance on the GPU side while still having very good CPU performance. We're not seeing the best CPU performance that we've ever seen in a laptop, but it is, it, is, it is still very good CPU performance with phenomenal GPU performance, right? The nice, another nice thing about this XMG Neo 17 is I think the software support and the desire by the manufacturer to maximize the user's performance. So you don't always get that. A lot of these manufacturers these days are trying to push like, medium medium high levels of performance or like not quite maximizing the performance because they're worried about the laptop's uh, reliability or making it easy for the users. XMG is saying, we want to provide the users with the most possible performance even if it's a more complicated setup process. Um, like setting up this water cooler is not as easy as just opening a laptop and turning it on. So I, I really appreciate that XMG is giving advanced users more of an option uh, in this in this category, right? The keyboard on this, the membrane keyboard, downright terrible. I would, it's, it's not good. It is the worst keyboard I've tried, even cheap, even worse than the $1099 gigabyte keyboard over there. It is, but that's partially because of the layout being, it not being a US keyboard. So it's very frustrating for me uh, using it. But even the, just the key feel on this membrane keyboard is like, it feels, like a keyboard you'd get in a thousand or eight hundred dollar laptop. The rigidity on the chassis though is phenomenal, and when you combine the rigidity with the Cherry MX keyboard option, it's going to be so much better. And I don't really have that ability to show you that MX keyboard, the mechanical keyboard, but you can look at my uh, CES coverage if you want to take a look at that keyboard, uh, the mechanical keyboard. It does feel good. It has a nice clicky feel to it, and it is much more premium. Definitely, if you buy this laptop, don't get the membrane keyboard. It's a 330 watt power brick. The port power brick is like a medium portability 
why so we took a look at that at the beginning of the live stream the overall system as as a whole is a bit thicker a little bit chunkier than say like the scar series it's in the same ballpark though of size as like the scar 16 and scar 18. when we saw performance when we tested performance on air not using a liquid cooler we saw still saw some very good performance overall in hogwarts um, but the temperatures were like about 15 degrees, 16 degrees warmer when on air and our CPU wattages did drop significantly when we were on air in the dual load. So um, performance though was still fairly good, uh, still very good. The actual running through the town was, it didn't really change the RFPS much. I think it was like, like almost the exact same, like one or two FPS difference. So it's gonna, your mileage is gonna vary a lot whether on air or on the water cooler really is going to make a big difference or not. I'm thinking just in general, this is going to perform better than the SCAR series, whether it's on air or with the liquid cooler. So, or the air, you know, the water cooler, the display on this 372 nits, about 100% sRGB coverage, about 80% of the P3 color gamut. It's not as bright, it's not as vibrant, and the contrast ratio on this is not that high either, right? It's not even a thousand. Know that images are not gonna pop as well, they're not gonna be as vibrant, but from an indoor gaming perspective, this display is sufficient to have a good experience. I would still say this is a good display, I just would not say it's a very good display or a great display. I really think great displays this year are utilizing 500 nits displays, uh, with 500 nits with closer to 100% of the P3 color gamut. Um, and if you were to see this display side by side with some of the uh, mini LED displays, uh, you would really see a big difference in, in brightness, contrast, color gamut, all of that. Um, and when you're paying this much money for a laptop, you're paying more for this for a lower quality display, but a higher GPU performance level. So I, I really think this laptop is gonna cater to people that um, are not very picky when it comes to their displays. When it comes to the display quality, I think the majority of gamers are gonna be happy with this, but they're not gonna love it. You know, they're gonna be like, it, it's good enough. That's what most people are gonna say. Even if you're video editing or doing basic Photoshop stuff, you can still do that stuff on this display. It's just not gonna be as color accurate or as vibrant. And if you're gonna do stuff outdoors, you're gonna need something more portable. I would really recommend another laptop that has a brighter display and has higher color gamut. All right, so that's enough about the display. Port selection on this laptop is very good overall. We got three USB A's. We got uh, some nice ports all around. The, the odd port is the extra mic port for the two, three and a half millimeter. So if you have the, the double prong headphones, you can use this laptop with that. Uh, we've got a full size SD card reader. I've not tested the speed on that. But for the most part, most people I think are gonna be very happy with the port selection on here with very minimal complaints all around. Uh, the only thing is with the liquid cooler connector ports that basically takes away a potential USB-C port or maybe a mini display port or maybe both of those could fit on here without that liquid cooler. So uh, when you use the liquid cooler, you are giving up one or two ports in exchange for that. In terms of portability, if you are planning to use this with the liquid cooler, I would say that uh, it's gonna be a little bit annoying having to deal with the water coming out, of, the potential risk of the water coming out of the laptop valves when you're just packing it from day to day. So I think the ideal person that buys this laptop wants to use this laptop mainly on a desk. Uh, they mainly are gonna use it, maybe they, maybe they move it at once a day at most, um, you know, maybe going from home to work and back. And that's it. And they maybe have a, a they have an oasis at work, they have an oasis at home, or maybe they just have an oasis at one of the locations. Or or the ideal person is just occasionally moving it once every few days or something. Uh, that's the kind of person who's gonna love this kind of laptop setup. Now, I gotta say the pump was a little louder than I was expecting. It it the pump itself kind of sounds like a laptop on like medium low fans. It's not as quiet as a fan, uh, as a laptop on low fans, right? Like my Blade 18 is quieter than the pump when it's on like medium low fans. If you're looking for a extremely quiet perspective, you could go with something like the Blade 18 instead and have a better acoustic experience. Or you could just honestly use this laptop with air cooling on medium fans and probably get the same performance as the Blade 18 and get a similar acoustic performance. Cause these fans, these fans when we're on max fans really aren't that loud. 
on the Neo 17. I'm pretty impressed actually with how quiet the fans are. Um, so, and I, I really don't think you don't, you, I don't really, I really don't think you have to get the, the water cooler if you want to get this laptop. I feel like there are a lot of advantages to just having this laptop without the water cooler because then you don't have to worry about the water in, in the, the cooler loop. You still get the ultra high levels of performance. You don't get as cool attempts. It is a little bit louder with the fat max fans on this thing than the water cooler is by itself, but it's not like the water cooler is completely silent either. Cinebench R23 is about to wrap up, so let's go ahead and take a look. Our average clock speeds also four gigahertz for the 10 minute test. Our temperatures are basically the same still with max fans, 85 degrees, 86 degrees, 93 degrees average on the package. Our CPU wattage averaged 144 watts during the 10 minute test. Let's see what we get for our 10 minute test with max fans enabled and the water cooler enabled. 28,400, quite a bit lower for some reason. I have no idea why though. Maybe some process is running in the background. That's unexpected. We got 29,999 uh, when we first ran it. Can I recommend this laptop? I think yes. Even without the water cooler, I think yes, I can recommend it. There's just, I think the biggest drawback to this laptop, it just doesn't have the premium display, doesn't have a premium webcam. You need to upgrade the keyboard and it's already a pretty expensive package overall. So it's it's gonna be, I think, I think there are people that are gonna get the XMG Neo 17 and they're going to love it so much. It, they're, it's gonna be their favorite laptop ever. They're gonna love the water cooler. They're going to leave the laptop mostly on a desk. They're gonna get better performance than nearly every other laptop in their games, okay? The other people um, that are gonna be happy with the Neo 17 are gonna be the ones that are not even gonna get the, the water cooler. They're just gonna be focusing on the air cooling of the laptop. They're gonna pay a little less because they don't have to pay for the water cooler. They don't have to deal with the hassle of the water cooler. Uh, and yet they're still gonna get very good performance. So, and in that scenario, I actually, in some ways I like the Neo better without the water cooler, which is weird. I was not expecting to say that, but the water cooler, for me, I would be worried about the water leakage in my backpack. I don't know, I, that's the truth. For me, if I were to, if I were to use the XMG Neo 17, I think I would want to either have it mostly on a desk all the time so you don't have to worry about the water leaking. You just don't connect the water cooler that often. I don't know. Otherwise, it's just, I'm just concerned. Like it has warnings in the manual. Like I'm afraid someone's gonna buy the Neo 17, put it in their backpack, water's gonna leak, and then they're gonna fry their laptop. It's unlikely to happen necessarily, but it's a possibility. And it's definitely a concern of mine. We're getting 85 megabytes a second for our copy speed. Overall, that's a pretty, that's a decent SD card reader, but like I get 250 on my Blade 18. So if you need a fast SD card reader, this is not a super fast SD card reader, but it's still faster than using USB. USB transfer, I usually get like 40. So it's still twice as fast as using the USB. Top, the webcam on this was bad. Windows Hello did work. It didn't work as fast as some of the other Windows Hello laptops, but it did work. The trackpad on this laptop was very good, I thought. The trackpad uh, had a good experience. It's a good click, it's a large trackpad, and I like the fact that you can disable it or enable it with a quick double tap. Can I recommend this thing? Yes, it definitely gets a recommendation, but you really gotta make sure you're the right user for a water cooler for it. For me to be like, yes, this is the clear winner over the competition. So if you're an advanced user, um, who wants to maximize the performance on their laptop. Water cooler enabled does help reduce the overall noise profile when you're comparing maximum possible performance. I love that. That said, even without the water cooler, I still think I can recommend this laptop. From a, from a perspective of overall sound, it's still a very acoustically quiet device with a high level of performance with decent enough ports, even with the water cooler taking away one or the two of the ports. It's still a good air-cooled laptop, I don't think that I would buy this laptop as my main laptop. I need a better webcam. I would prefer a thinner, more portable device. This is a little bit chunkier, and I, but I think for someone who's looking more for a desktop replacement, moving it from place to place, they're gonna use the water cooler. Those people highly recommend this lap. I can highly recommend this laptop to them. You know, it's the same crowd of people that are probably looking at the GT77 Titan uh, and this costs significantly less than the GT77 Titan and still gives you similar performance and temperatures than the Titan does when Titan's in max fan mode, right? Um, the bigger issue with when you compare this with the Titan is that the Titan has better CPU performance um, with a higher bend CPU as well. So if you need the CPU performance, then I would still recommend the Titan over this guy. Overall though, 
This is still really good. I mean, I like it. I like it. I just don't love it from my own perspective. The performance was phenomenal. This, this gave us some of the best benchmark performance we've seen in any laptop. Um, consistently competing with and beating almost all of the competition by a little bit. There's only maybe a, a handful of games like in Dead Space where we saw better performance from other laptops. And that was a very GPU, CPU bound game. I think that really sums up everything for this laptop uh, pretty well. And it's definitely something that I can recommend for the right person. That's it for this live stream. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks to Tom. See you everyone. Thank you much for tuning in. Bye-bye.